Roger Federer recently won his 16th Grand Slam title by beating Andy Murray in the final of the Australian Open. And in this video, we're going to talk about why Federer beat Murray so handily, why this match wasn't nearly as close as many expected. In my preview to this match, I said that Murray had to do three things to have a chance at winning, to have a chance at beating Roger. And unfortunately for him, he didn't do any one of those three things. And that's one of the reasons this match wasn't particularly close. He had to serve well. He had to return well. He had to apply constant pressure. He didn't do any of those. So let's go through each particular thing. We'll start with the serve. And for the entire match, he served 57% on his first serve. And this number is a little bit, a little bit skewed because his serve was much better in the third set, but in the first and the second set, his percentage was way down from this number, and that's why Federer won those relatively easily, and then by serving better in the third set, that pulled this number up. But over the course of the match, 57% is not going to get it done. So the first serve wasn't there, so he wasn't winning too many free points off that shot. Now, the second thing uh, Murray needed to do well was return well, but... Here on the return, he only won 32% of his return points. And let's compare this number with his previous rounds. In the semis versus Chilich, he won 39. Against Nadal, he won 44. And against Isner, he won 42. So these are obviously very solid numbers here. This, this is for first serve and second serve. But then there's a huge drop-off against Federer. So that's obviously one of the reasons he didn't perform particularly well. Now, these numbers are even more telling when we go over here because these are the percentages that his opponents won on their second serve. And Federer was at 61%. He won 61% of his second serve points versus 44 for Chilich, 42 for Nadal, and 29, which is pretty amazing, against Isner. And that's why the 61% gets the lol with a Z, the lols, because this number is unbelievably high. And this is a huge reason why Murray had difficulty getting his teeth into Fed service game and ultimately one of the main factors in why he lost this match. Now, the final element, pressure. Well, I said in my previous video that Murray had to apply constant pressure over the course of a match. He could do that by standing up and taking away Federer's time, a la Davidenko. He could take big cuts when he had a look, and he didn't do that either. So what did start to happen in the third set was you had Murray taking bigger shots when he got an opportunity, and that's what narrowed the gap there and gave you that epic third set breaker. But certainly in the first two sets, he was way, 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 way too passive, and he allowed Federer to get into a groove, find his range, and play obviously at the high level that he played at. So Murray reverted back to that passive style we sometimes see him play, and like I said before, that's not going to get it done against Federer. Federer loses to guys who take it to him some way, who apply constant pressure in the majors. And beating Federer in a best of three, not the same. The, the, the passive style might work a little bit better there in a major when Federer is really locked in, really focused, obviously wants to win more so than maybe some of the smaller tournaments. That's not going to get it done. To wrap up this video, I want to change gears and say thank you to everybody who was watching these videos over the course of the Aussie Open. I had a lot of fun putting them together, even though I had to stay up till about 7 a.m. every night watching all the matches. And we had an especially good time with the live webcast we did for the men's final. That was me, Ian Westerman, and my partner, Adam. And we really enjoyed that. I hope you guys, those who tuned in, enjoyed it as well. We plan on doing it in the future. So please leave us some feedback on the webcast if you saw it or just these match previews and everything. Tell us what you think in the comments, what, could, what worked, what didn't work, and so on. And the final thing I want to say is for all those people who participated in the predicting of the scores, uh, first of all, thank you. And second of all, I, I'm, e I'm in the process of emailing, going through all the comments, figuring out who got the closest. So you should be hearing from me in the next few days if you won. And we will certainly be doing stuff like that in the future. So once again, thanks a lot for watching these videos. We really enjoyed putting them together, and we look forward to doing it in the future. Want to know the secret to Roger Federer's forehand? Click the link in the description and sign up for our 100% free course.